Father, we give you praise. We ask, Lord, that you will teach us your word today by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome you to today's study. Uh, I've titled today's study, From Egypt to Elim. And basically, we're going to be studying about Israel's journey, you know, in the wilderness, especially after they left, you know, the land of Egypt. Amen. Praise God. Now, from, from Exodus chapter 1 through chapter 12, we see God commanding Moses, you know, to go to the land of Egypt in order to deliver the Israelites, you know, from the bondage of Egypt. When Moses got to Pharaoh, Pharaoh would not let the Israelites go, of course, according to the foreknowledge of God. And God performed several miracles. And the final one was the death of the firstborn, which you see in Exodus chapter 12. It was after this miracle, you know, of the execution of the firstborn of the Israelites, sorry, of the Egyptians, you know, both human and animals, that Pharaoh let Israel go. Amen. Now, after Israel, you know, left uh, Egypt, the Bible says, you know, in Exodus chapter 14, that Israel had the first challenge. And this first challenge was that before them was the Red Sea, and behind them, you know, was the, 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 the Pharaoh himself. And of course, with the, with the entire host, you know, of Egypt. And so, and so more or less, you know, Israel was trapped. This was a major challenge to Israel because this is the first challenge that they're experiencing, you know, after they left the land of Egypt. And what was their response to this challenge? Their response was that they murmured, they grumbled, they complained. Why Moses would have brought them out of Egypt, you know, to come to experience such a terrible encounter where Pharaoh is going to take them back into captivity. That instead, Pharaoh would just have left them, you know, in the land of Egypt. Praise God. Now, you must understand that in this, your heavenly journey, praise God, your journey towards the heavenly Canaan, you are going to encounter challenges. You are going to meet problems. Gone are the days when we were taught that after you've given your life to Christ, you know, you begin to operate in a bed of roses. No, no, no. Christianity is not a bed of roses. You are definitely going to encounter challenges before you give your life to Christ and more also after you've given your life to Christ. Such was the case, you know, of Israel in, in, in this particular time. But their response to the challenge was that they grumbled, they murmured, and they complained as to why God, you know, had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Amen. I'm sure if you look back even into your spiritual life, you, will, you would have seen occasions where you had to complain, where you had to murmur, God, why have you saved me? And if I have been saved, why am I going, you know, through these kind of challenges that I'm experiencing, you know, even in my life? It is natural. It takes the spiritual, you know, the spiritual man not to complain, neither to murmur. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 14. Let's read a few verses beginning from verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh, you know, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea behind Philaroth before Bezepor. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no grace in Egypt, Hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dared those with us to carry us out of the land of Egypt? Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? And so the response of the Israelites to this particular challenge, you know, was to grumble, to murmur, and to complain even against Moses. Amen. I might ask you at this moment, are you a murmurer? Are you a complainer? Do you grumble? Do you complain? Do you murmur when you encounter challenges in this your earthly walk, you know, with the Lord? When this going is good, the tendency is for men to praise God. But when the going turns to be bad, we tend to complain. This was the attitude of the Israelites all through their journey in the wilderness. And I pray that this will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. That whether the going is good or bad, you will learn to praise God in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. And so what Moses did, instead of joining the Israelites, you know, in complaining and murmuring, what Moses did was to stretch forth his rod in obedience to the command of God. Now, God gave this command to him after he cried unto God. While the children of Israel grumbled, murmured against Moses, what Moses did was to cry to God. In times of your crisis, in times of challenges or encounter, what you should do is to cry to God. And when you cry to God, God will show you, you know, the solution to that particular problem. And so God told Moses to stretch forth the rod. And as he stretched forth the rod, even against the sea, amen, 
The Bible says that the wind came and, and the sea parted for the Israelites, you know, to walk through. As the Israelites, of course, walked through, the, the Egyptians also attempted, you know, to walk through. And in the process, God drowned them, you know, in the Red Sea. Praise God. Now, seeing this great miracle, what the Israelites did in response was to praise the name of the Lord. And you see this in Exodus chapter 15. Moses, together with all of Israel, you know, sang unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have been turned into the sea. Amen. In fact, Miriam also and the women also organized their own praise worship session. Where they praise and glorify the name of the Lord. They were excited. This great miracle they have never experienced such in their lives. We had sea turned into line for people to walk through. And so they praised the name of the Lord. They glorified the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so what you see from this story is that Israel knew how to praise God when the going is good. But once the tide turns around, they murmured and they complained against God. Amen. Now, after this miracle of crossing the Red Sea, God caused Israel, just a few days after that, God caused Israel, you know, to walk in the wilderness three days without water. And when they got to the point, to the place known as Mara, they found water and out of excitement, they wanted to drink from it. Only to their amazement, they discovered that the water was bitter. That's what the Bible says, bitter or poisonous. There was death in the water and therefore they couldn't drink from it. What did they do again? they immediately switched to their mode of murmuring. They began to murmur, you know, and to complain, you know, against Moses again. I want to ask again, when you are faced with a challenge, when you are faced with a difficulty, what do you do? Do you murmur? Do you complain? Do you grumble? Or you seek the face of the Lord? For the children of Israel, they were expert at murmuring. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. May you not be an expert at murmuring or grumbling. May your expertise be in praising the name of the Lord, even when the going is seemingly not good, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so as the children of Israel murmured and grumbled, Moses did not join them in their murmuring. And I must also say to you that when you're in the midst of people in the church, outside of the church, and people are murmuring and complaining against, against situations in life, do not join them. Do not, do not mingle with them. Do, do not side with them in murmuring and complain against situations. Moses didn't join them. Moses cried unto the Lord, and God showed him what to do. In the midst of your crisis, cry to God, and God will show you what to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me read Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. He says, And Moses cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And so because Moses cried unto God, God showed him a tree or a stick which he cast into the water. And the moment that stick got into the water, the Bible says that the water became sweet. In other words, the death or the poison that was in that water was immediately neutralized. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want you to understand that God's solution is not really in the miracle that he performs. Now, listen carefully. The miracle that was performed is not in terms of that tree being thrown into the water because the tree does not have the power to remove the poison from the water. Amen. But the miracle itself was in the obedience of Moses to the instruction of God. What brought that miracle, again, wasn't because Moses cast the stick into the water. It was the obedience of God. When you obey God, then the miracle is bound to follow. Amen. That poison, that death was not removed from the water by the tree that he cast inside. Rather, it was God who removed the death that is in that water in response to the obedience of Moses to his commandment to cast this specific tree, you know, into the water. 